What is up, everybody? This is Zero Fats, aka Cam Genix, coming at you on behalf of Epic Conversions. Dot. I hope everybody's doing amazing out there today. I have a very special guest. He's been working online since the year 2000. He runs the RiseForums.com th uh, forums. He runs uh, KevinMuldoon.com and the Rise Forums YouTube channel. Um, I'd like to welcome to the show Kevin Muldoon. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Cam. Good to be here. Absolutely. You know, okay, so I want to talk for a minute about how I, I, I found out about you. Okay, so okay. I'm, I'm oh, you, you didn't you didn't actually see this in email, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I gotta I gotta I gotta tell my little story here to get things started as an egotistical bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so no 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 but but seriously, I, I was on uh YouTube and I typed in is blogging dead? Is blogging dead? Oh right, like, okay. Up, I run a blog, and uh, my, I had certain feelings about blogging, and I knew that I was running my blog a little bit differently, so I wanted to see what everybody else was thinking about blogging, the real bloggers out there who, who were blogging for blogging's sake. Um, and, and your video popped up. It was like number one or number two, so I started watching. I think, I think because the title is, is Blogging Dead. Yeah, <laughs> I think exactly. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was awesome, man. And I was watching the video, and it was an awesome video, and I loved your viewpoints on blogging. That led me to KevinMuldoon.com, uh, which was your blog, which where I learned more about you. That led me to the Rise Forums, which is your forums, uh, which is awesome. There's a ton of people talking there, uh, giving super helpful tips and tricks about making money online. I loved it. Um, and that kind of prompted me to reach out to you and ask if you'd come on and do an interview for me. Uh, and you were gracious enough to say yes. But that's how I got learned about Kevin Muldoon. Man, can you tell me your story now? For the people who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started online, and uh, how you got to this point right now? Well, um, I started, as you say, I think you said I started in 2000. Um, I come out of university. And I got my first job in finance. It was like a pensions thing, very boring. But when I was coming home, I was I was um, actually registered some domain names with a friend, and like anyone else, we couldn't we couldn't um, sell them <laughs> because they were terrible. And um, so, but for one of them, I developed a shopping directory for it, and it was oh horrendous design and uh, designed it in Notepad and HTML, and you know it's just like a basic shopping directory. It listed online shops, very bad website, but I generated a few commissions and then I was kind of hooked. And then like a year or so later, I think I had like 40 websites. <laughs> because I used to I used to build all these small content websites. I didn't make a huge amount of money from the website, so I'd make a, a little, you know, a couple of bucks here or there. But I'd, I'd build them and sell them. And I was making, you know, $300, $500 and building them and selling them. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I, I was developing forums and I kind of got in into the poker kind of gambling niche at the right time and I made a killing through that for a few years and until the, um, some American politicians <laughs> 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 that, that changed the whole thing like that was kind of the the catalyst for the the, the whole online poker thing to go down but um, I got out at the right time and all that um, but I kind of I moved into blogging probably 2006 2007 mm -hmm. and yeah, I just took it from there. I've, I've, I get involved in WordPress, and I've I've st I've I've just been doing the same thing, you know, since then. You know, running blogs, working with WordPress, and over the last few years, I've tried to get more into video. Yeah. Because I think, um, you know, well, I talked about that in the article. You know, with with I think we need to evolve now. You know, things have changed a lot over the last ten years, and for a long time, I was just doing the same thing, thinking I would get the same results. I think you really need to move forward and do podcasting and do videos and not you don't have to do everything, but you definitely need to connect with people in a different way than just articles. Yeah, the landscape has changed quite a, a lot over the last ten years. That's true, man. That's true. Certainly. What uh? What, now what? What made you move to? There was a lot. Now when the uh? So when the uh? The gambling niche thing kind of dried up for you. There were several different things that you could have done. There was a few different ways you could have went. You were kind of at a crossroads. What made you decide on blogging back then? Was there like an inspirational figure, well, or, or what? What made you decide? Well, you thing, know, I'm going to go blogging. The interesting thing. I mean, actually, I used to try um, and test. I, I tested lots of content management scripts, 
in the early 2000s. There was all these like uh, CMSs like PHP, Nook and all these kind of things. And it was very similar to blogs. They were very similar to blogs. I mean, you know, all the content was posted on a chronological basis and things like that. Even though I wasn't blogging then, I came because I used to publish articles on the forums. I had like 10,000 posts in the forums and a lot of them are long articles. I used to do product reviews. I used to do all these things. So I was kind of blogging before I was blogging, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It was only until like 2005 or six I did a blog to the, the poker forum. And then I started, you know, to blog on that. But really, for me, I was doing exactly what I'd been doing for years. I'd already been doing this for, you know, since two th- the early 2000s. The only difference was it made it easier. You know, the, the, the whole platform was set up to publish content on a daily basis. Whereas before, it was like a page system and it was a kind of like a directory structure or whatever you had to use and you had to set it up yourself. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I had tested blogging scripts for a long time, but it wasn't really till 2006 that I started doing. Actually, one of the first blogs that I started, I think I bought it from someone. I had a blog on my poker forum. I had a blog. I was traveling Australia and all these places in Asia. I had a blog, but... I think I bought a blog about the Microsoft Zoom. <laughs> if you can remember that. <laughs> and um, I, I started blogging that like 2006 or something like that. Nice. Um, yeah, and then and I started blogging more about website development. I think it was 2007 I started blogging tips.com. I love it. I love and, it, man. And, uh, yeah. So I, I want to move into the subject of, of blogging being dead and is blogging dead and stuff like that. For everybody out there who's watching this, um, Kevin's video is about five months old where he gives his views about you know, the, the shape of blogging right now in 2017 and what's blogging become. So I want to ask you now, man, um, what is the differences between when you first started blogging in 2005, 2006, 2006, 2007, and that area, and, and now, here we are in 2017, 10 years later, what, what are some of the differences that you see in blogging? Oh, it, it's, it's night and day. Um, I mean, you, you need to remember, back 2006, seven, you really didn't have social media. You know, Facebook, I think, was, I, I don't think Facebook was even there, was it? It was MySpace, or, or it was wasn't it? Was it yeah, well, my, but even, like, MySpace was probably quite popular. And before that, there was there was a few other ones, but they weren't hugely popular. Like, um, like I said, when I went traveling in 2006, 2007, I'd create for family and friends because there was nowhere to upload photos. So I just I decided to upload my own, um, you know, create my own website. But, um, you know, it's, it's changed so differently now. You know, people's user habits... You're talking like Rise Forums. Like my forum, is, there's a lot of great members there, but it's relatively quiet because it's very hard to actually get a forum to be successful now because everyone is giving, they're all communicating with each other on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. And people have only got so many hours in the day, so they don't go to forums like they used to. And it's the same with blogs. You know, when, when I first started blogging, it was relatively easy to just publish a thousand word article and you would get, you know, 20 comments, 30 comments things like that, and everyone would be interacting, and then someone would write a blog post and link to your blog post and things like that. That doesn't happen now. You're, there's some amazing articles out there that have got zero comments because people, <laughs> yes. would rather, people would rather comment on Twitter about it or share or like on you know, Facebook than they would actually leave a comment. It's just the whole, the whole way that everyone's communicating with each other has, has changed. Yeah. And, um, Go ahead, it, man. Sorry. No, no, just, just, just to say as well, I think the changes from that have been implemented by Google and Bing and things like that, they brought in SEO companies and this really, really, well, I was going to say it killed it for the blog. I make, a, I make money through writing for some companies and doing <laughs> reviews for other people. Um, and that wouldn't have happened. So it's a kind of double-edged sword for bloggers in that respect. Because yeah. before, yeah, I mean, there's still. I don't, can you remember the spinning software? Yes, yes. Well, yep. when I when I when I first started blogging 2006 seven, I would write articles and people would just take my RSS feed, the full feed, mm-hmm. and then just publish the content on their website. I had dozens of people doing this to my articles every wow. day. But when it happened initially, these people are ranking higher than me. <laughs> <laughs> man unbelievable right but thankfully google you know they started implementing like rules etc and 
the first one published has to be the source and the rest of them don't get much juice and things like that. But at the time, it was quite bad. Um, but the spinning software as well, they would take an article of mine and then they would just put it through the, you know, they just change certain words. And then it, they would just publish it and it doesn't even make sense. You know, if you're reading it, it just... <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's like a robot's written it or something. Um, and yet those articles were still ranked high for quite a few years. So this is what SEO companies used to do. They would On their website, they would say things like, we are SEO experts, but what they were doing was just filling the internet with junk. And yet a lot of those articles were actually ranking quite highly. Mm. Um, when the, This is where it comes around to what I was saying about um, with the double-edged sword, because when Google cracked down on that, all these SEO companies, well, in fact, they're, they're calling themselves content marketers now because it sounds fancier. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sounds more professional. Um, the, what they started doing was like, oh no, we need to actually start publishing content now. And they just filled the internet with content. And a lot of the content, most of it is terrible, I would say. Yeah, um, there's a lot of it out there that's not very good. That's for sure, man. Yeah, but when when these things come in, I, I, I had a lot of people, uh, I've, I've, read, I've wrote about this in an, other articles, but People, write, writers, I think, in general, aren't valued a lot. Like you get a lot of companies who say, can you write an article for us? A 2,000-word article will give you a link back. I'm like, well, that link <laughs> back doesn't pay my mortgage, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, but yeah, after that, I would, you would get the same people come back to you in six months' time and say, oh, okay, we will pay you. Because they had hired all these cheap people from Asia. And no offense to people in Asia, but when English isn't your first language, the quality of English is really good compared to a native speaker. That's true, man. And, You're right. And um, but eventually they started coming. So I guess a double-edged sword because if it had, if it, ten years ago my blog would probably be more successful, but I wouldn't be making as much money writing for other people. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, man. And I, I think that you know uh, the, the big eye-opening thing. And it, it's really cool to talk to someone who's who's been blogging when blogging was where it was at, and, yeah. and also you're still in the game today, <coughs> where you know you're, you're smart enough and you're insightful enough to see, um, hey, the conversation's not happening on the blogs anymore. That's not where it's. The conversation's happening on Facebook, the conversation's happening on Twitter, the conversation's happening on Reddit, and like, that's why shares are up, and like, comments are way down, because people are going out there, finding these really cool blog posts, like you said, yep. and they're just taking them back to their home base, and they're sharing them with their friends, yep. and they all talk about them on, you know, I mean, I, dude, I can, I can write a blog, I can write a blog, you know, 1,500, 2,000 words, and it'll be a great blog, and I'll put like uh, pictures and, and, and video embeds in it and make it really cool, you know, and um, people will share that back on Facebook. And all the comments will be happening on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, you're not, where you're not getting any revenue or banner advertising and things like that as well. You know, it's taking it away from your website, which isn't what you want. No. Um, and but, then, well, I mean, there's pros and cons. Obviously, if you've got a, a large social media presence, um. <clears throat> sorry if I keep coughing. I had the flu last week, so I'm drinking a lot of water. Oh, um, man, I'm sorry. I, I hope you're feeling no, better, no, dude. No, I'm, I'm okay. Um, one of the things, like, I, I talked about this in an article as well. and I think it's right that search engines place a high emphasis on um, social media presence of a website or, or, you know, how large the brand are. The problem is that this can be gamed. You know, on Twitter, for example, you can just follow someone, they'll follow you back and keep doing that. And, yeah. you know, you see yourself on Twitter, someone will come and go, oh, I've got 100,000 followers. You're like, well, you're following 120,000. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it doesn't mean anything. But Google and search engines do place a high emphasis on this. Like the other day, I, pub I published, a, I don't know if you know the WordPress caching plugin, a WP Rocket. I, I, I bought it, yep. I, I installed it on my website, and I did a case study, did lots of, you know, tests. It took me about three days to write this. It was like 4,000, 5,000 words. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's, I'll get some views and things like that, but the amount of time that I'm investing in that is pretty poor compared to what I get back, really. What does yeah. uh, what does WP Rocket do, if you don't mind me asking? Just for our listeners or viewers out there who don't know what we're talking about. Okay, well, it's a caching plugin for um, WordPress, and what that means is 
it will take a cached copy or a static copy. So, for example, in your your web, is your website WordPress as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's WordPress, sure is. Okay, so when someone visits your page, they need to, you know, they'll load the index.php file. That needs to load all these other uh, files. It needs to retrieve information from the database. You know, it needs to get the information from the database rows. It needs to get all this information, all these requests from your own website and other places as well. What a caching solution does, and it's the same for content delivery networks or CDNs. Um, I don't know if you know about those. It's kind of similar. Um, dude, Kevin, I, you're going away over my head, dude. I, well, I'm not it, a technical guy. You know I don't. Okay, do well you've got, you've got you've got your website. <laughs> you've got your website, and someone. I, I'm not a developer either, but I know this. If to your website, someone needs to retrieve the information from all those WordPress files. You know, like the index.php and all these other admin files, all these other things and retrieve the information from the database. So you have to go to the MySQL database. What it means is different, lots of information coming from different places. What caching does is takes a snapshot. It goes, okay, here's what the file would actually be. So when you're doing that before, it's kind of dynamic, if you know what I mean, so that every time it's loaded, it's loading the latest version. But most people, you know, the page doesn't really change unless like comments or you update the article. Mm -hmm. So they take a snapshot, so it's a cache, page and it's HTML. So what this does is it reduces your bandwidth and it reduces the, the page size and it optimizes the website. So in essence, a caching solution takes a snapshot of each page in your website. That means lower bandwidth, quicker loading page times. Um, your website ends up much, much quicker. It, it does a lot of other things as well, you know, with the JavaScript and CSS, it kind of squashes things down. but. Essentially, what it's doing is taking a snapshot of a page, and you know it'll give it. It can reduce, like when I did the test on WP Rocket the other day, it reduced my loading times from like say four or five seconds down to a second. Perfect. And That's great, man. Search engines like Google obviously place a high emphasis on speed now. So if you've got a really slow loading website, it's a ranking factor, and your website will drop down the rankings. Nice. Yeah, um, that, that's great. How did it work for you, man? How did it work for you? <laughs> yes, yeah. It, I, I mean, I've actually been using it for years. The reason I did another review was because my license expired. I didn't use it for a, cu a couple of months, and I thought, well, I'll install it again and, you know, do a case study. But nice. As I say, this article, say it's 4,000, 5,000 words. The amount of time I put in, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll get traffic, I'll get links to it, and, you know, it might encourage people to be subscribers but to go back to what i was saying about search engine uh, about social media presence take a website like mashable that has got several million um you know facebook followers twitter followers all that kind of thing they can polish any turd and it will be successful it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable like from as i say I, I think i spoke to uh, we mentioned this before we started yeah you know, the the quality of content is so bad in, in general across the board, not every article, but and I'll give you an example. I saw one, one of their um one of their articles that I saw and it was ranked really highly. It was basically a YouTube video with one sentence above it. Check out this video, guys. It had <laughs> something like ten thousand shares, eight thousand likes, and it's it's um and these things these articles are getting ranked higher than the videos themselves. That is, yeah. the, the, there seems to be an imbalance with how much power they're giving to to websites with social media and those websites. There's no benefit to them writing a five thousand word article. There's no benefit. What they do is churn out fifty or a hundred terrible articles per day and people on Facebook and things. I mean. Not not to um not not to speak badly of the general public, but I, I mentioned to you that I had that martial arts kind of a uh, website, and I had a Facebook page for it, it had like sixty five thousand likes, and I you know I I'd bought I think absolutely I paid for like ten thousand, and then it grew organically. Mm -hmm. See when I posted something on that Facebook channel, and it was like say for example the wrong URL, and it was an error message, it still got thirty forty likes. <laughs> Do people like, not even look at what they're, they're just like it, it just it just shows you that like the importance of social media today yeah you know, it, the, the, that's where the conversation is you know that, and that's where it's at man you're right uh 
it, it, it's a crazy thing, and, and it, it does kind of lead me to wonder, uh, you know, is blogging dead, or or do we look at blogging in a different way? I mean, there's still a lot of blogs out there, but like you said, they're yeah. not getting comments anymore, not really, not not for what they're putting in. Like you said, if you write a 5,000-word article, I mean, look, I can write a 5,000-word article on my blog, put pictures, put YouTube videos on it, just really make it look great. Uh, this blog post, uh, and then I can take it and just turn it into a pure text, just cut and paste yeah. the text and post that as a, a text message status update on my Facebook. Who's gonna? What's gonna get more interaction? What's gonna get more shares? The, the, the pure share text post on Facebook's going to get more. Uh, so that that's kind of a funny thing. You're right, it's, man. I mean, I, I don't think blogging is dead. It's just not as easy as it was. I think you really do need to. I think it's more. It's better to be more niche. So, well, websites like Mashable and all these other big websites, they generally are news websites, and they've got the big so social media presence. They'll publish 40 articles, 50 articles today. There's, there's a constant source of news, but those are, you know, 50 for, you know, how many people writing for them. Uh, but for mine, you know, I'm, I'm maybe focusing on website owners and people trying to make money online. It's a little bit more niche. But you, I mean, it's still difficult. But I think, I think there's, there's, you know, if you're a fan of a sports team, there's a large audience, and if you write good, really well-researched articles, you'll find, you'll find an audience somewhere. Yeah. But you will still get people more likely to share the, the articles and things like that than actually, like, <laughs> subscribe to your RSS feed and things like that. It's just, it's just things have changed. And I think this is what you need to do. What you're doing, and you know launch a YouTube channel and connect with people. Before, 10 years ago, I connected with people in one way through my website. That was it. And, you know, or the RSS feed. And now you've got to keep up with Twitter and Facebook and and YouTube and all these other things. There's a lot of different um, ways to connect with an audience now. It's funny that you say that, man, because it's almost like blogging's still great, but it's, it's different than it was. Uh, the, the, it's audience based and not like home based. You know, the blogging's yeah, not the yeah. home based. Your audience is going to live in multiple places, but it really kind of leads me to wonder like, it's almost like the difference is monetization. Like, the way we monetize is a little different now compared to what it was 10 years ago, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, for I me. Mean, ten, 10 years ago, banner ads were probably the best way. And now, with people, is, I mean, I've looked at discussion. I generally think that. I can understand why some people use um, you know, ad blockers, but it's widely accepted that it's okay now to block ads, which is insane because the majority of content webs websites require banner ads to survive. Yeah. Um, but it's just the way it is. So you can either you can moan about that all you want, or you can just accept that okay, this is how the marketplace is now. So this is how I'm going to make money. So I'm going to start embedding links into my content like affiliate links into my content rather than banner ads or I'm going to, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like 10 years ago, like I've, I've always made more money from embedding affiliate links into content through product reviews and that than I did on the banner ads. But I still made money through banners. But now banner ads, they're, they're very ineffective. You know, they don't really make a lot of money compared to <clears throat> embedded links. Right, right. I, and I, I know a lot of people say that. Yeah, they're, they're, a lot of people are saying that they're not very effective anymore. They don't do very good. So, yeah, I, I totally uh, agree with <laughs> Yeah, you. I, I think people do become ad blind. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what the percentage, it might only be 10, 20 percent, but it's, a, it's quite a lot of revenue, you know, if people are blocking ads. Um, and people block ads on YouTube as well, though, so that's... But. Yeah, they do, man. That's, that's true. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, yeah, I mean, for me... Uh, this sounds cynical, but uh, for me, with the blog, I mean, I love making blog articles and putting posts on my blog. Uh, I'll take the same articles and I'll share them on Facebook as, as text posts, you know, just to audience build, just to kind of pull people around me. Um, but man, my blog, not to be cynical, but uh, the purpose is to put people on my email list. That's what it's yeah. there for. <laughs> not even yeah. to be cynical about it. But last year, like... 80% of my revenue was generated through email transactions. So it's like uh, yeah. the, the well, email. So everything is, fu is like a funnel into the email? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's just how I do it. And I know everybody's different. But 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I love the blog and I love making it good. Um, but at the end of the day, when we talk about practical purposes, um, I, I want those people on my email list because that's where I get the, the one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's where I generate the most revenue. Not to make it about money, but it's like what you were saying earlier. Um, you know, backlinks don't pay my bills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. It's a good quote. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's funny though because I think I think there's there's lots of different ways to approach marketing. I, I, swear, I, I don't agree that the one way is the way to do it. I think there's lots yeah. of that. Like you're saying about email marketing, I actually made a decision last year to just close my newsletter uh -huh. because I was finding that, I, I mean, I wasn't, I'd, I'd start off writing like an, an, an email for my email list and mm -hmm. then I'd go, no, I'll turn this into an article and then I'd publish it <laughs> in my blog and then send an email saying, check out the article. But I was getting people signing, like I was getting people signing up every single day, but you know, it's, it just got to the point, open rates were poor, people, not people weren't clicking. I was like, you know what, I'm just want to focus all my attention on my blog. But then there's other people that all they do is focus on the list mm -hmm. and they're killing it. And then there's other people that they don't even, there's, I mean, look at YouTube. I'm, I'm trying to integrate YouTube, like put YouTube videos into my blog posts and then just, you know, try and connect with people in lots of different ways. And people who visit my article will then maybe go to my YouTube channel. People go to my YouTube channel, may go to my article, just try and, I don't know, just try and get them from all angles. And but there's I, other people, successful YouTubers, they don't even have a website. True, that's you know, true, they, They're just You're like, right. I'm just going to go through YouTube, which yeah. can be dangerous in itself because <laughs> it means that Google has all the, you know, all the keys to your kingdom. But yeah. it just shows you there's lots of different ways to make money, you know, and... Absolutely, absolutely. That, that's a great point, man. And, and you're right. I think that's interesting. You, you noticed that uh, there's a lot of YouTubers that are really big, and that's all they do is YouTube. Um, I don't, I don't know if they necessarily realize that the value is in the audience that they've built uh, yeah. around them, not necessarily in the ad revenue that they're generating. Because for people like me, I have like you know a few thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel. Um, the ad revenue from that is not that great. It's a, it's a, you know two or three four hundred dollars a month. It's not a ton of money. Yeah. Most of my ad most of my revenue is generated from other things like affiliate marketing and you know launching my own products and stuff like that. Uh, but the audience that I that I build from having a YouTube channel and I know you have a YouTube channel now uh, yeah. and, and you're building subscribership on that and uh, I'm sure you can contest to this, but. Uh, the audience that you build is the true value there with the YouTube channel. So. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. And I actually I was reading about this the other day because there's been a lot of discussion recently on YouTube about they were kind of I don't know if you read about it. You know, a lot of YouTubers were complaining they were losing money. I think it started because Google has this big. I don't, what's the name of it? There's a big company. What was it P and O? There's like a big conglomerate that you know advertises household brands and things like that. And they were unhappy because there was like someone up uploaded a beheading, something really Ooh, horrible. Oh, yeah. And there was like um, their advertisements were being displayed beforehand. Now, any intelligent human being can go, well, that's got nothing to do with Kellogg's cereals. Right. You know, I'm not going to associate those together, but brands still don't want to be associated. Right? I don't know if it was just a bargaining tool, but they went to YouTube and YouTube have started cracking down and certain videos. And I think they're trying to filter you know, which content is, like, you know, like family friendly and which isn't. A lot of people have reported their ad revenue dropping a huge amount. Yep. But again, the way the way that I'm trying to look at YouTube is that the money that I make from it will be a nice bonus. You know, I don't, I, I'm, I don't want this to be my sole source of income. Say, for example, you know, I've, like my, my tech YouTube channel has got like 1,200 uh, subscribers, not much. It makes about $100 a month. Right. Say I get to 10,000 subscribers, maybe I make $1,000. I don't know what the views will be at that point. But, I mean, I could look at it and go, well, I make $1,000 a month through Google AdSense. But really what I should be thinking is, wow, I've got 10,000 subscribers. Right. What can I do? So I'm not doing it just now, but that, that channel kind of focuses on more on technology. You know, I'm a bit of a geek with phones and, you know, things like that. Um, and it opens up lots of different things. I mean, I could go to... I've actually researched that a little bit already. You know, places like Alibaba, and you get products, and you can get them to build your products 
And then all of a sudden, you're not starting a, a, an online shop from scratch. You've got a huge audience which you can start pushing products to. True, man. You know, and, and really you can contact advertisers directly. And I think a lot of YouTubers, they just rely on AdSense. Whereas I'm trying to think, well, long term, it'll just be a way to push people towards something else. Just like you're doing with the email list. It's the same principle, really. It's right. About using using the blog or the YouTube channel or Twitter or Facebook to push people to the part where you make money. It'll be a product, a show, affiliate sale, or anything. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think it's funny because it all just becomes like a um, – like Bruce Lee, like Bruce Lee said, you know, uh, be like water, my friend. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, be flexible in, in, in the way you move in and out of, of this space. And, it, yeah, I mean, it's it's not just about the blog. It's not just about the YouTube channel. It's it's about building the audience, you know. And Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, it it kind of leads me to my next question for you. Um it has changed a lot since you started. Uh, the whole internet making money online thing has changed a lot. Uh, what would you recommend to a new guy who comes in and he wants to? He thought he was going to come in and start a blog. He wanted to start making money online. He thought maybe he could do it with a blog or or, or whatever. Um, what would you? What do you recommend to the newbie who, who comes online in 2017 and wants to start making money online? What would you say, man? What would you tell him to do? I think. I mean, there's a lot of advice you can obviously give to someone just starting out. First and foremost, I think, is to follow your passion. And I know that sounds like some sort of self-help guru type of marketing stuff, but, you know, I, I've started websites in the past and I've went, oh, look at those click rates on Google AdWords and Ads. You know, if I do a successful website on that, I'll make a lot of money. And you build this little content website and then it's about two days and you're like, I'm hating life right now. I just don't <laughs> enjoy, you know... The reason my like I was successful in building a poker forum was because I was playing it a lot online. When I stopped enjoying playing poker, because I was myself with it, is when I stopped up, you know, I stopped enjoying updating the website, and that's when I sold it. I was like, I'm not even enjoying this anymore. Yeah. I think you really do have to be passionate about what you do. As I said, if you if I mean everyone's passions is different. This was what I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel. I really like technology and games and things like that. And I thought you know that that will come through and you know, in my videos, I'm, I'm interested in that, enjoy doing it, and I'd happily make half as much money if it means doing something I enjoy, because long term, there's there's probably a lot of other jobs out there you could probably make more money with, um, but if you're not enjoying it, you know, I think it's better to focus on what you enjoy, so if you've got, a, you know, a, a, a favourite um, sports team, basketball or whatever, start a blog on it, or you could start a YouTube channel on it, you know, if you're not comfortable on the camera, but you're a good writer, that might push you more towards a blog. Um, but I also think, the other thing, I mean, as, as well as following your passion, I think you need to be single-minded. Like uh, uh, This is something I've struggled with as well because I think it's everyone who starts new, they go, oh, uh, you know, I'm so excited and they put all their energy into the one thing and then they go, oh, what about this? And before they know it, you know, I, I've seen, for example, say someone who's started a... Uh, a basketball blog or something, and then they've started learning about WordPress, so they're trying to learn more about HTML and building a website. So it's like a basketball blog, but they've got WordPress tips. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, yeah. who is your audience here? I think it's, I think it's good to be single-minded and focus everything on one project, not to divert. After that, I try and just focus on my blog, Rise Forums, and my YouTube channels. I do have a few other kind of websites kicking about. But I don't really do anything with them. Um, if you've got, like, say, six websites to maintain, rather, it's not like each of them gets a six of your time. You spend so much time administrating and things like that. If you focus all your energy on one website until it's successful, then you can hire someone to maintain it before you start thinking. You know, I think it's much better to focus everything on one project than split your time into two or three projects. But there's always that desire because when you're learning especially at the start, you're learning so much and you start getting all these ideas and, oh, I could do this, I could do that. But then, you know, you spend less time on the website that you should be focusing on. Dude, that's such, but, a, good, that's such a good valid point, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I, I'm saying all this through experience. I've wasted years of my life making these mistakes and even when I knew them, 
it's very easy to fall into that trap. You know, like you get a better idea. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. Um, and you always think, oh, I'll come back to that later. But then you don't. You're as I think you're as well selling a website. You know, if you're not going to if you're not going to focus all your energy on it, sell it. But really, when it comes down to how you're going to make money online now, there's so many different ways. You know, you don't you don't even have to know how to build a website today. You know, or anything like that. Um, I mean, there's there's people who are on Twitter who just make money selling tweets, or on Instagram. <laughs> That's true. Inst- Instagram, you know, these um, you know the fitness people or uh, models that just take pictures of themselves and then they advertise brands. They make money that way. Um, you can make money through Amazon doing drop shipping without even having a website. So I don't know. It, it's hard to say what's right for someone because I think a lot of you really. At the start, I guess you do need to do a little bit of trial and error to see what works for you, but I think YouTube's a good way to start to get interested in it, but um, a, blog, a blog's very easy as well. You know, you can start a blog in seconds and get it online. <clears throat> but it, it, will, it will be time, it'll, it takes a while. I mean, at the end of the day, there's still a learning curve with all of these things. You, there's a learning curve. And I think, well, there's two things I think are the best way to learn. One is just to do it. You know, Absolutely. you can spend all day talking about it, but get off your ass and do it and <laughs> make mistakes, make mistakes. Um, I do think at the start, though, there is some value from, you know, buying, say, 10 books on a subject and just reading through a couple of them. Sure. And just to get a general understanding of how things work. But at the end of the day, you can see books all day long. It's not until you actually do something that you realize, you know, where the problems arise and things like that. Right. One of the reasons I'm, I, I'm not a developer, but one of the reasons I'm ex- experienced with certain website things is because, you know, I went through it all when I broke things and I've been through my websites breaking and all these things. Um, there's a learning curve. Yeah. There- but I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. I think it's hard to say a general statement what someone should or shouldn't do. There's, there's that many different ways to make money online. It's, that's a good point. That's a good point, man. That's a good point. There's a lot. Yes. There's a lot. And, and, and you know what? It's funny. You, you said those two things, and, and they are so true. There's so much wisdom in that, man. Um, it it, it kind of reminds me. I was The first thing you spoke on about uh, you know, focusing your energy on, on just the one thing um, and not being distracted by a lot of different things, and it's so easy to do. It, it, it's funny. I'm a fan of the UFC. Uh, I don't know if you're a fight fan. I don't know if you watch a lot of fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu myself. That's awesome, dude. That is yeah. so cool. Um, well, I've been injured the last few months. I've got a sore back, but I'm hoping to get back. In fact, I need to get back the next few weeks because um, at my club, Frank Mir is doing a seminar, so I need to get what? back for that. That's yeah, awesome, Frank Mir. Dude. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to let him come over me, though. He'll take that home. That's great, man. Uh, yeah. I actually saw him. Uh, he was on uh, The Fighter and the Kid. I saw him uh, a little while back on a Fighter and the Kid episode. But uh, no, no, cool. Um, so they always talk about being efficient with your energy when you're in a fight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, don't just go 100% on every punch, you know. Don't go 100% on every kick, you know. You have to be efficient with your energy. And it's funny, man. I definitely see the analogy there for working online. I mean, if you just focus your energy on this one thing that's important, um, you know, I mean, because we all have other real world stuff we have to deal with. We only have so much time in a day. We only have so much energy in a day. Um, but how efficient can we be with our energy? And if we can be super efficient with it and we can just focus on this one thing that's important online, you know, it it just seems like we'll be more successful, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I I mean, I think a lot of it, attitude is a big thing to all this as well. You know, um, it's okay saying I want to be successful online. This is the thing. See, you go into the uh, like Warrior Forum and all these places like this. Everyone's trying to sell you the magic pill. You know, you'll make money. You'll make fifty thousand dollars a month by doing two hours of work a day. No, you won't. You won't. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, just accept the fact that it's hard work. There's going to be times where, you know, see, you're going to your friend's party. You're like, oh, I'm going to be two hours late. I need to f- get this finished. I'll get there later, no problem. You're going to have to prioritize. What do you What do you want? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I'm a, I'm a great believer. You I mean you shouldn't overwork yourself. I think there's more to life than work. There's more to life than money. But at the end of the day, you're not going to get to where you want to be unless you put the hours in. 
Yep, that's Whether true, that be man. learning, you know, uh, application or anything, you know, you need to put hours in. Yeah, absolutely, man. You, you got to put the work in. It might not be the only it's, thing, but you can't move up unless you dedicate some time to it. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's as it's. Um, but I mean, I think knowing you, you'll know yourself being self-employed. You need to manage your time, and you know yourself the days where you're doing nothing. You're oh not, yeah. You're not. You're not moving forward. You're just standing still. Yep, sitting um, around playing video games. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, I mean, I, I love video games as, as well, but it's, you know, if you sit playing video games all day, you're, you're never going to make money. You're you not know? going nowhere. You're going to go back to work, man. You're going to yeah, go back exactly. to work for someone who knows how to make money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. That's the dilemma. Yeah, if you can't. Unless you make to... money by playing games online, then yeah, that's that... the dream. Yeah, you get, on, you get on with that Twitch, then you'll be doing good, yeah. okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, man, I know, man. Okay, okay, okay. The other big theme we've had during this interview is, is audience being a big, uh, being kind of a big key for, for what, what we do. Um, and, and while it looks like a lot of negatives, like the blogs have changed and it's kind of went in a negative direction with the blogs, one positive, and this is kind of something you talked about uh, a few minutes ago, but one positive uh, that I find is that even though a lot of the conversation is happening in these big social media platforms and not on our blogs anymore or not on our forums anymore, doesn't that make it easier for us to go out there and find people who give a crap about this sports team or find people who care about this weird subject that we care about, like alien abduction or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We know where they're at, right? They're on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 bizarre. it's bizarre. Like everyone's got... I don't know, like a hobby or a passion about something and you don't think anyone else likes it as well, but you'll find them on YouTube or Facebook or uh, or Twitter or something. There's always people out there. It uh, wasn't like that in 2006. It's like they were out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it, as it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a good point you raised though because it's, although it's taken it away from the common area of a blog and now you're connecting with people in all these different platforms, um. Yeah, I, mean, I, without, I, I do think that the, the actual entry point for getting online now is much easier than it was 15 years ago when you had to know, you know, you had to learn HTML, you had to learn the basics of CSS and things like that. You don't need that today. You can just go on. In fact, there's, there's a good argument that you'd be wasting your time learning how to you know, <laughs> develop a website unless that's what you want to do for a living. Yeah, that's um, true, man. So th there's a very, you know, there's a you can... You could probably show someone who's never built a website in their life, show them how to upload a website, and then they can start connecting with people on Twitter or Facebook and things like that. Yeah, absolutely, um, man. Absolutely. That's, it's, it's, it's different. It's different, and you make great points about it. Uh, I want to talk to you for a minute about the Rise Forum. Uh, okay. Because I, I know this is your forum, and uh, I think, and I was super impressed with it. Because, I mean, to be honest with you, um, whenever I looked, I looked at the idea of starting a forum uh, a few years ago, but the task to getting this forum to the place where there were people actually hanging out there and uh, yeah. it was kind of a thriving place seemed like a monumental chore, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but, but yours has people on it, so I thought that was really great. And uh, could you talk a little bit about Rise Forums and how it got started? And um, I developed... Actually, I had a forum. I mean, I've, I've I created my first forum like 2001, and so I always enjoyed interacting with people in that way. I had a forum with bloggingtips.com, and then I had a WordPress website called wpmods.com, and I had like a, it was like forward slash forum. You know, it was kind of a sub sub part of the website. There was a forum, and I used to help people with WordPress problems or blogging advice and things like that. And um, so when I sold those websites, I, I, I wanted to start another one. You're saying it's busy, not to put myself down, but I think it's not as busy as it could be. I'm not going to say that the project is a failure, but I'd like the forum to be, say, 10 times busier. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's got a small collection of people, but everyone who, there, who is there is really good guys, and they're all actually more knowledgeable than me. They're all like plug-in developers and you know, really uh, technical people, and they actually help me more than I help them. Um, but again, it, it is hard to um, get a forum going because there, there is there's so many people 
you know, they're active on Twitter, plus they've got their own projects and things like that. Yeah. Um, the nature of that forum is that most people go to a forum like that for help. So once they've, you know, and, and I think in the forum, we've actually got an, un, we've got an unhealthy balance of too many experts and not enough beginners. <laughs> too many know? chiefs, not enough Indians. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, because we've got a lot of people that know what they're doing, but we've not got beginners asking questions. It's kind of a weird dynamic on the forum that you do need the beginners to, to stimulate a lot of conversation. Um, you, you said that uh, it's, it was a paid forum, but it started off that way. I was charging people to go on, but I've got a small $10 fee at the moment. It's it's not for money. I'm not looking to make money on this forum at any time soon. Um, it's really just to stop spam. I tried forums are just the same as blogs. You get so many spam. Yeah. These spammers, you know, using software to sign up. And I tried all these different settings and plugins, all these different solutions. And the easiest, the only solution that works is to just say it's $10 to sign up. And spam was eliminated overnight. Like I had spam problems for years That's fantastic, on those forums. Man. Overnight. Pay ten dollars and spammers are like, no, I'm not paying ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Happen. It's really yeah. I See, be honest, never, if if, if someone even that. if someone had to email me, say I'm really, I give out free app. I, I probably shouldn't say this publicly, but I give out lots of free applications or um, uh, registrations for it. Because someone will email me, go, oh, is it ten dollars? I'm like, here's the here's the the free link to sign up. <laughs> because I, I don't care about the money. It's really just to prevent spammers. That's amazing, um, man. I, I did yeah. not even – it didn't even occur to me that that would be <laughs> such an effective way to stop spam. Oh, that's, that's amazing, dude. The thing is as well, you know, it, it makes sense that they're not going to sign up because if they sign up and they post a spam thread, I, I've to, I'll take their $10 and just delete their account. Wow. You know what I mean? That's great. Um, yeah. That's so, um, yeah, so th- th- there's a lot of, like, bots and software. It, it, it's a real problem. I, I've got a couple of other forums. And I've set them up as manual approval. So people need to email me and say, I've just signed up and I need to manually approve them, which is a bit of a pain in the ass as well. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, it, it's, it, it's unfortunate, but all, spa, all forum software suffers from this. It's, it's really amazing. bad. Did, yeah. Now, for those of you guys out there who want to know more about, um, want to know more about Kevin's forum, it, it's really cool. It's, it's called riseforum.com. Um, and uh, it's not just technical stuff. He's got a lot of make money online stuff for people out there who are interested in learning how to make money online. You got several threads there talking about just different ways to make money online. I thought it was a really cool place, man. If you're sick of the Warrior Forum um, and you want something maybe a little bit not quite as big as the Warrior Forum, I think this is another cool, really cool option for you. So, well, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, I, I would, I, I would agree. Um... There's other good forums out there, you know. There's places like SitePoint and things like that that I would recommend. Um, Web Hosting Talk is good if you've got problems related to hosting and things like that. But as Warrior Forum has a lot of good people there. It really does has a lot of knowledgeable people and a lot of um, you know well, experts. I would say a lot. The problem is that it's set up to allow the wolves to basically you know get away with murder. <laughs> sell all these really, you know, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people ripping people off there and being dishonest, and I think that's, um, that's I wanted the opposite of that when I started my forum. Somewhere yeah. where you'd say, no, we don't want your money, you know, for the advice. Well, because you see that a lot. I always annoy me in like, forums like, how do you do this? Oh, yeah, I can tell you. Just buy my my ebook, my five-page ebook, which costs $99, <laughs> and it'll show you exactly how you do it, you know? Not to say that there isn't good ebooks. I've 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 bought a lot of ebooks myself that are good. Um, I don't know. I, I I just have a problem with people that have been working online for like six months and they're calling themselves gurus and experts. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. You know, you know what I don't say, even Kevin. like using that term, and I've been working on you know for seventeen years. I don't like that term. You know what they say, Kevin? I'm, they don't, I'm going they don't to make it. experts like they used to. <laughs> well, I know. Well, it's true though because I think I think it's a dangerous term to use anyway. Because I'm going to a, a conference for WordPress in Paris in a, um, two weeks, nice. and um, I'll meet people that have been like involved in WordPress and for say a year. And some of these people are amazing. Like they've got businesses, they've got all they've got all these successful uh, like online shops and things that and they've set up. Mm-hmm. And really, they're big. So. How long you've been working online doesn't make you an expert and all that, but True. I think throwing away that, throwing using that term a lot, expert or guru, 
it's a bit well, especially when it's yourself calling yourself it. I'm an I'm an expert on this, and you know it's yeah, yeah that's a good especially point, in, man. in the making money world. It's it's it's, it's very subjective, and, and and you know that's a great point. Uh, uh, expert is like a. Man, it's like an objective term, isn't it? It's like there's no like uh, rank structure for being an expert. There's no like well, test you have to pass to be an expert. Well, this is the thing, and also I don't think I don't subscribe to the fact that making money makes you an expert either. I'll give you an example. When this this is back when maybe you could have called me an expert. When I first started my poker forum, I was in, and um, as I said, my poker forum was doing well. We're setting up all these poker tournaments, and for quite a few months. My affiliate income every month was like in the twenty thousand to twenty five thousand dollar mark per month, and I was honestly doing about nine hours of work a, like a week. That's awesome, so was, man. So I was making a few hundred grand every few months, right? From like, basically, I was just a bum playing Call of Duty every day. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was make. Now here's the thing: I'm not making that money now. I'll, I'll point out, but <laughs> here's the thing: you could have said that time. Well, I'm an I'm an expert. I wasn't. I didn't know why I was ranking for certain terms. I didn't know why I was making more money than other people weren't. And I don't, I still, you know, I didn't know why it started decreasing maybe it through competition. But at that time, I could have said, oh, I'm making this amount of money. I'm an expert. But when you look at the facts, I wasn't really, you know, I, I'd, I, I really, I'd, a lot of it is trial and error as far as success online. But the more experience you get, the more, t you know, you, you start making less mistakes. You know, there's more, there's a, and, uh, uh, it's probably the same in the USA, but, you know, you see, you see a lot of success stories of people that are billionaires or, you know, people that are millionaires. And a lot of them have got like 10 failed businesses behind them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. So that is trial and error, but every time they fail, they are learning. They're learning yeah. something. Just like Thomas Edison said, like he he had like over uh, like what was it like over ten thousand uh, ten thousand yeah, yeah. tries for that light bulb, and uh, he never considered them failures. He thought he thought I figured out another thing how how it wasn't gonna work. So it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's I mean, it's very true. Um, it's almost like that age old saying, you know, experience outranks <laughs> everything. I mean, you can have like a hundred experts, but who's the guy who's failed the most? Who's the guy who's who's done? Oh well, yeah, most, like, I mean, know? I mean, even look at like. Um, look at facebook like there was a lot of other social media websites at that time and it could have went that facebook didn't do well and then would never have heard of it you know maybe it didn't pick up at the university and then it wouldn't have been was it the third most traveled website in the world is it or something right yeah but it's, it's easy in hindsight to say I don't know, I think I'm going on a wrong tangent here. What I'm saying is, there's a, I, I, I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of, like, when I was successful with that poker website, I think I could I could have been unlucky and it didn't do well, or I, I was quite lucky in hindsight, or maybe I was doing a lot of things right, but the problem was I didn't know what I was doing right. And I think a lot of people starting off online, when they find success, it's quite lucky that they found success. If you read a lot of success stories with people online, they kind of locked out on their yeah. second project or their third project. Oh yeah, man. There's no question. There's no. But question at the end of the day, you, you make you make your own luck. You know, if you keep rolling the dice and you keep putting the work in. That's true. Call, you, you know, in fact, is that not? I don't know. If you talk about quotes. I don't know if it Michael Jordan or there's a basketball player. Says, or the the more shots I take, the luckier I get, or something like that. Yeah, or the harder man. I work out. A lot here I get. Basketball quotes, Kevin. That's what yeah, I want to hear, some, is it Jordan that says that? There's, yeah. there's somebody that says that? Yeah, or, or is exactly not? In fact, that's Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, that's Wayne more, Gretzky. I think. The more the more shots I take, the luckier I get. <laughs> yeah, Boom. it's true. And it and so I mean, the more hours you put in, the more work you put in, the more likely you are to to succeed. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, that, that's a. Uh... That's fantastic. Um, yeah, and on that, I will say I definitely agree that experience kind of just outranks everything. Uh, the, the guy that's failed the most and, and, and now he's successful, he's probably the biggest expert uh, here. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. Um, let me take a curveball with you now. Let me take a curveball here. I was reading your bio. Okay. I was reading your about about section, and uh, you uh, 
you, you had a 2600 when you were a kid, an Atari 2600. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I remember the Atari 2600. It had like a wooden engraved, uh, like a kind yep. of a wooden face. It was a little flicky switches. Yeah, the little flicky like, switches. switches you could, like, had the joystick like this. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I do still have it somewhere, I believe, somewhere up up the stairs. And I, and I know you probably don't have as much time for video games now, but uh, what was your favorite game back then, man? And uh, do you still play video games today at all? And if so, I, actually, what, what, what do you play, that, man? I just got this from China today, actually. I'm, I'm reviewing it my channel soon. It's like a little, it's a tiny Famicom imitation thing that I bought. It's like ten dollars. No way. <laughs> it's like, that's like that's kind of like the original NES, right? Yeah, well, it's like an imitation. Um, I, I do. I, you can't see it up there. I've got some games up there. I've got like the Game Boy SP and 3DS and PSP Go and things like that. Um, yeah, I, I do still play games. Like back back in that time, I only had like three games. I had like Pac-Man, Galaxian, and, and Combat. I think it was. And I played some games with friends, but it was Galaxian. I used to play a lot. It was kind of the old school Space Invader game. Galaxian. But that's, you know, yeah. Um, I, 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 I didn't get. I don't think I got the NES until I was ten years old. Nice. Eleven, maybe even eleven. It was like nineteen ninety. It was quite late actually, because the NES came out in eighty five, but they didn't really pick up speed in the UK yeah. until like nineteen ninety. But yeah, you know, I was. Um, I, I loved the twenty twenty six hundred growing up. It was awesome. But, it? uh, it's crazy. I, I, I don't. I don't know if I'd put it as my favorite console though. You know this. I think everyone who say what's the best console of all time, it's probably around when you're between eight and like fourteen or something, you know. Yes, yes. You know, absolutely. so for me it's the NES or the SNES. You know, I would probably say <laughs> those are the best consoles. Um, yeah, I don't even want to think how many hours I have clocked in the Street Fighter Two on the SNES. Oh yeah, man. I was the same. <laughs> I was the same. It's actually I've still got the box for it upstairs. We found it is because it was a Street Fighter Two edition I got for the SNES when it came out. And uh, and, uh, again, and again, that's that kind of that's funny that we're talking about that. Uh, but with that, Street Fighter Two, that's a discipline. You don't you don't get to be yeah. an expert at that game without putting hours and hours into that thing. Uh, and probably, and I didn't know this about you, but the MMA thing and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu thing that you were talking about. Uh, how many black belts do you know in Jiu Brazilian Jiu Jitsu who haven't put years into that craft? Oh yeah, that's that's a lifetime of devotion for that. Yeah. Lifetime, lifetime. It's, it plus, you know, it, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is quite hard in the well, when you're older anyway, it's quite hard in the body. So to get to that level as well means you've avoided injuries and, you know, you've stuck at it when everything in your body is screaming, quit, quit, you know, it's, it's a tough game. That's how it is with blogging now, man. It's hard to avoid injury when you're trying to do blogging in 2017. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I certainly wouldn't put an M off. A blogging though I, I, it's something i still enjoy absolutely at, at the end of the day all these things are just a way to connect with other people and then reach an audience and then when you've got an audience you can make money that's that's what it is at the end of the, of the day and you know what man that is so funny that you say that uh, and i know that's been kind of the theme of this interview but one thing i want to say is as i've noticed that uh Man, there's two kinds of people that I see getting followed on the internet, right? The, the kind of person that has arrived or the, people perceive them to have arrived. They're the expert. They're like the, the black belt in jiu-jitsu or they're the uh, Street Fighter II expert. Like they're, they've arrived, right? But then there's the cat who's like on a journey, right? And he's just on a journey and he's telling people his story as he goes and he's learning and evolving as he goes. Man, those cats get followed too, don't they? Yeah, and I I think as well, like from my point of view, that there's certain. But this is the thing because I think one, like there's certain things that I've got that I'm good at, and certain things I'm not good at. And what that means is I can't give advice on things that other people couldn't. So, so for for example, someone just starts. Um, I couldn't do a, a like a, a really really beginner blog, for example, about how to do really beginner stuff, and, and as well as someone who's gone through that journey. Because I did it years ago, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. So they can document exactly what they're doing. They can actually document problems that I didn't even realize were problems. Yeah. You know, it's like. That's a great point, dude. You know, it's like talking to someone who's at absolute top of their game. How can they relate to someone at the bottom in any level? Because they're so good. Um, but 
th th this has kind of helped me as well because I think there's a lot of products that I've reviewed and before our, our services and I really didn't know what they were or what they did and I didn't know anything about the subject. But because of that, I, I learned it and then I could explain things in a kind of, you know, like an idiot's guide almost and that helps other people. So I think some people who are at the top of their game aren't as helpful as the people who are going up, as you say, the people on the journey, because the people on the journey can document their experience and they can relate to other people that have been through the same journey. That's, that's, Whereas if you're at the top of the game, I, I mean, I 150 percent, especially from a making, especially from a making money online point of view, like yeah, you know what I mean. Someone could, someone could come to me and I'm like, I didn't even realize why can't you understand that because <laughs> I've been doing. You know, not not from an arrogance point of view, just, but just because I've been doing it so long, I'm like, oh, can you not understand that? And then, I think, right. every, I mean, everyone's like that on some subject. Dude, I, I, I 150% agree with you. Uh, I mean, uh, I had someone just ask me the other day about coaching and, and who they should work on trying to get for a coach. They're trying to make money online, and uh, they think they could afford this level or this level. And, you know, these levels for coaching, for internet marketing success, man, they go way up to $20,000 for a coach. Um, it, it's crazy. But um, – I think a lot of people, they just need the person who's like maybe a couple steps ahead of them, right? And yeah, like, you're, yeah. you're brand new. You've never made any money online. Okay, you just need the cat who's making like 100 bucks a month. He's figured out how to make 100 bucks yeah, a month yeah. online. And see if he can show you how to do that for like 100 bucks or something, you know? Yeah, and if you jump too far ahead, then the – you know, make it, things may get lost along the way. Yeah, you're out of your depth now. I'm way out of my depth. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's like it's, me it's, on the mat. If you were trying to do like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, man, you'd like clean the floor up with me, dude. I'd, I'd be all. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's yeah. The, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is weird that because it's like if you if someone just walked in, I'd maybe you know almost like play around with them as if they're a kid, and you you throw them around to do it. You know, put them in any lock you want. Mm -hmm. And yet you see me with someone that's just there a year or two beyond me, and they're they're doing the same to me as if I'm <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing with, with them. You know, it's just but it's just weird that because you see that a lot in the UFC and people will go, oh, oh, he was terrible, and you're like, you don't realize the level that guy's at and the subtle movements he's doing. And yeah, there's a lot going on there. Just me as a casual fan, I love UFC, I love MMA, but I, I'm smart enough to realize there's a lot going on there. You don't even get to wear that logo unless you know what the hell oh, you're doing. Most of those yeah. guys have been doing it for 10 years. They've yeah. been doing it 10 plus years. So, um, yeah. It, yeah, it's, I'm actually, I, just, I got my tickets. So the, the UFC's in Glasgow in a few months, so I got my tickets all day with my friend. Are you a the Conor McGregor time. fan? Yeah, yeah, I like Conor McGregor, yeah. Nice, nice, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, that was the best, man. When they were in New York, did you see that UFC when they were in New York and he won, oh, the, I, he won the two belts? Yeah, that was, um, oh, what'd you call him again? Um, who was it he beat? It was yeah, a lightweight guy. Yeah, he beat uh, Alvarez for the Alvarez, second. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, I remember, I, I couldn't believe that his, is it his mother's Irish or something? Because he's like, what is he, like half Hispanic, half Irish or something? Yeah, it's, yeah, something like I that. I couldn't believe it. I was like, you're actually half Irish? That was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, he got booed. Everybody was booing him. It was horrible. Yeah, he's just a I, charismatic dude, I guess. You know, he's just a he, really charismatic dude. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like Muhammad Ali or something. You know, is got. It could be fighting Floyd Mayweather next, which would be insane. I'd watch it, man. I'd watch yeah. it. Everyone says he'd lose. Everyone says he'd lose, but I don't know, man. The dude uh, is mystical. He does some crazy things. Yeah, I know. I, I, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't worry, like, live on it, like, <laughs> make myself sound stupid. I, I, I don't see, I, like, I remember, like, Ricky Hatton in the UK, he had, he was undefeated, and then Mayweather and Pacquiao were just that level above, and they just played around with him, and this was, this was a guy who was a top-level boxer. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if maybe his size and his reach would come into play somehow. Maybe they'd do a game plan. I don't see how it plan. couldn't, man. I don't see how it could not. I mean, but Mayweather is, I mean, Mayweather on, has fought the best and not even got a punch into him, you know, it's... Yeah, he's on another level. It, it's true, he's on another level, but hey, man, anybody can get, anybody can take that shot that just takes him out. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't know. Puncher's but, you know, chance. Puncher's chance. Yeah. A puncher's chance. But, but, he, but it's different, though, right? If they're going to box, he's wearing gloves now. He's got those bigger gloves and just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be less of a knockout with the big gloves on. 
Yeah, so, I don't know. But anyways, uh, I'm getting way off topic, and I apologize. Um, no, that's listen, okay, that's fine. Listen, uh, before we get out of here, and I've taken up too much of your time, man, but I do appreciate you being no, on. No, not at all, not at all. What, uh, where can people find you, man? If they want to learn more from you, uh, and they want to learn more about uh, Kevin Maldoon, and they want to get some uh, you know, advice from you or whatever, where can people get a hold of you? What's a good place that you're living at and uh, uh, online, and uh, what do you got coming up, man? Anything cool going on in the world of Kevin Muldoon coming up here? Well, the easiest place, I mean, I, my blog, KevinMuldoon.com, is my HQ. That's where I kind of got, I've got links to everything. I've got a contact form. I've got... Nice. You know, links to my social media accounts and things like that. Rise forums, if you want to, you know, hang out and or ask questions, you can join me there. Um, as far as what's coming up, no, I mean, I, I'm I'm just trying to keep plugging away uh, at what I'm doing just now. I'm going to be doing more reviews, more tutorials on my blog, and on the YouTube channels, I want to try and do more videos there as well. I, I quite like what I'm doing just now, as far as I write on my blog, interact with people in my forum. And, you know, I connect with people through my YouTube channels. I, I really, at this point, I just want to scale it up. You know, I don't I don't want to... I mean, at the end of the day, I've only got so many hours in the day. And I have got other, other ideas for other projects that I could maybe implement once I've got a bigger audience. But at this point, I just want to keep putting good content out there and grow my subscribers and things like that and just scale it up. And, yeah, I think... I think the more the bigger the audience, the more doors open for things as well. You make more money, and when you've got more money, you can hire more people for writers, promotion, all these other things. Everything kind of just snowballs. He is veteran online entrepreneur, owner of RiseForum.com, owner of KevinMuldoon.com, and the Rise Forum YouTube channel. Kevin, I really appreciate you taking the time and being on today, man. Maximum Anything. respect, and uh, we'll see you next time, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Cam.